Uh, good morning, Leslie. Thank you so much for joining us now. Um, good morning. We're so sorry for your loss, and, and I really appreciate you uh, joining us um, so soon after you lost your husband. I think it's really important to make people understand this, the implications of these ambulance strikes. So would you mind just telling us uh, what, what happened to you? Um, my husband woke me up um, about one o'clock saying um, he had indigestion. Can I get him a couple of tablets, which I did. But when I went to give them to him, he, he was slurring his words and he was almost incoherent. And he was clammy and sweaty and ice cold. So I just straight away picked my phone up and dialed 999. Um, and they said, well, a clinician will ring you back. If he deteriorates, ring me back, ring us back. And I did that. Every time I rang, I said, he's deteriorating, he's getting worse. Um, oh, well, a clinician will ring you. Um, if he deteriorates, ring back. And then the third time I rang, I said, I can't feel his pulse. And I didn't know then what that, he was still breathing, but I didn't know then what that meant. But the paramedics told me his, his body was shutting down and... Um, it was the heart's way of protecting itself to take blood from the extremities, and that's why I couldn't get a pulse. Right. And then on the sixth phone call, still no phone call from the clinician, um, he stopped breathing while I was on the phone, and I, I dragged him off the bed and started doing CPR. And um, I was doing it for about, three, about 20 minutes, and... Uh, I, I was exhausted. It's so hard to do. And I wasn't sure I was doing it correctly in the end because I, I, there was no strength left in my arms. And then the paramedics came and they were absolutely amazing. And they just would not give up. Um, they just threw everything, you know. And and then they told me that that he 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 passed. So the the, the timings of this, Leslie. Um... I think you rang, did you ring 999 about just after two o'clock in the morning? Yes. No, it was it actually, it was 1.56 okay, was the exact so time, the first okay. time. And it was 3.22, the sixth time. So nearly an hour and a half, you were ringing 999 six times. And alone. they kept saying to me, the clinician will ring you, but he never did. Alone with Rob, on your own, not, not knowing what to do. Um, no. Was Rob otherwise well? Was he a, was he a well man? So it came out. He'd never been to the, he'd never been to the doctors ever, and he was just so fit. And well, we we I can't, but none of us can believe it. It's it's truly truly heartbreaking. And and when the paramedics arrived, Leslie, um, did they? Did they have any explanation as to why it had taken them so long to get to you? No, they just had just received the call when when they came to me. So, so this this wasn't actually on a day when there was an official strike, even. No, no. This was just the poor service in your area. Yeah. What was and he like? The, the, um, the awful thing was um, the, the ambulances park up on a road near us. They, they joined with the uh, fire service and um, the paramedics left about half past five, I think. And my friend went to work at 10 to 6 past the ambulance um, park and there were 15 ambulances there. So tell us about Rob, Leslie, um, and what, what a loss this is for you. He was just delightful. Um, always on a level, never moody, um, very positive, always. Um, love to debate, love to chat. Um, yeah, and all round a great musician. Um, and he was with London Welsh Male Voice Choir for 10 years. Mm. Um, just an all round Lovely guy. That, and and a, a, real, a real family man, I believe. So this will be a, a huge shock to all of you, not just for you, but for your absolutely. whole family. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just, 
I mean, every every single per. I mean, I, Rob had no idea how much he was loved and in the wider community and how people held him in high esteem. And the, the flowers and cards and phone calls that we've had, it, it's just been amazing. And he, he just was so unassuming. He just an all-round lovely guy. And the, the paramedics, I understand, Leslie, did, did say to you that if we'd got here earlier, he would have had a if, really if good they'd have, Yeah, if they'd have called, if they were dispatched after my first phone call, um, he would have survived. Have you had any feedback from the local trust? Have you made any sort of official complaint? Are you considering any sort of legal action or investigation at all? I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. I just, I mean, I got up in the early hours of the morning and sent an email to Rishi Sunak, um, the chief exec of the NHS Federation, um, and just saying I wanted answers because <laughs> I'm, I'm just at a loss. And, and I, at the moment, I just feel numb. I, but... <laughs> I know, I know. It's so hard. It's so difficult. Um but I think what you're doing speaking out is really important because we talk about strikes a lot and we see people on picket lines and we know the NHS is in a terrible state. But it can be sometimes quite hard to make the connection between what we're seeing on the political sphere. We see MPs fighting about it in the House of Commons. And I think stories yeah. like yours, Leslie and, and Rob. It's an important. But story we're not unique. We, we, we've just become a statistic. and. You know, the more this goes out, you know, the more you hear of, of people going through more or less the same thing. Yeah. And why can't all the political parties get together, not just the one that's in power at the moment, but all of them, and just make radical changes? Just, just, um, I don't want to keep you too long, Leslie, because I know this is such a difficult conversation to have, but um, we've all grown up in a, in a country, haven't we, where we, we just presume that when you ring 999 in an emergency, that an ambulance will come. We, we've just taken that for granted, maybe. What was it yeah. like? Just, just, just explain that, that sense when you're waiting for the ambulance, of the emotions that you were going through. Well, I, I was sort of trying to see Rob, and I didn't really... I didn't have a chance to cuddle him because, sorry. Um, it's all right. It's all right. Thank you. It's all right, Leslie. I think it's incredibly brave. Take a breath. It, uh, and this morning, funny enough, I was thinking about it and um, I forget who it was said to me, did you ask? Did you mention a heart attack when you first phoned? And I, I honestly couldn't remember if I did. But the fact that they told me, first of all, to give him four aspirins to chew. And when I went to do it, he started vomiting. So she said, don't give him the aspirin. Um, at, but if he deteriorates, ring 999 again. Mm. And so he, <laughs> he was getting worse and I phoned again and it was a mail call handler and he said, give him the aspirins, but make sure he chews them. So they must have known it was a heart problem for yeah. them to recommend me giving him aspirin. Yeah, yeah, that was clearly the suspicion, wasn't it? Yeah. Leslie, I'm so sorry. We, we are, we're so sorry. Um, but thank you so much. Honestly, I, I know this is a really hard conversation, but I think it's incredibly important because we talk about it. We talk about this issue. We talk about the NHS politically, theoretically in terms of policy, but to see the human tragedy and suffering because of this, I think is incredibly powerful. Uh, Leslie Weekly, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Leslie, who lost her husband. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Take care, my love. Now, Liam Williams, Executive Director of Quality and Nursing at the Welsh Ambulance Service has said... We are really sorry to hear about such a distressing incident and we send our deepest condolences to Mrs Weekly and her family. This is not the service we aim to deliver and we know that this must have been a very upsetting and traumatic experience for Mrs Weekly. We will be contacting Mrs Weekly to listen to her concerns, investigate the circumstances of our response to Mr Weekly and answer any questions that she might have. The pressures on services across the NHS and social care are well documented. 
they go on. We recognise that too many patients are having a poor experience of our service, which is something that we are extremely concerned about. We're working hard with health board colleagues and Welsh Government to find solutions to long waits in the community for ambulances, but these issues are complex and not easily fixed, dependent as they are on so many elements. In the meantime, we send our sincere condolences to Mrs Weekly and her family and we will be in touch with her shortly.